You found us. Hello, and welcome back. You're tuned in to Wine in Nine, where all you need to learn about wine in nine minutes or less. Here's your host, Bob Cappuccino. Today, it's all about rosés, those newly popular, delightful, sexy, and versatile pink wines that range in color from the palest pink to bright cherry red. Everybody, from wine newbies to snobs, appreciate rosés for everyday shipping and as companions to a wide range of foods. It's true, and it's not a recent phenomenon. Forty years ago, dry rosés were very popular in the U.S. Portuguese wines like Matus and Lancers, and a few French rosés like Tavelle and Rose d'Anjou could be found in most restaurants and featured in wine shops. Then came the advent of white Zinfandel from California. Initially, they were dry or a bit off dry, but soon they morphed into wines that were tutti frutti sweet. Serious wine drinkers shunned them, as did the wine media back then. So eventually, it became a bit uncool to have a pink wine sitting on your table. Dry rosés suffered and were eliminated from wine lists and relegated to obscure, dusty lower shelves in wine shops. Now, about 10 years ago, things started to change. Wine drinkers who had started with the sweet stuff found that their palates had matured so that simple sweet wines just didn't cut it anymore. Some good winemakers at well-respected California wineries, as well as traditional European sources, began cranking out serious, dry, and very satisfying rosés. Then wine writers and ad agencies recognized the opportunity, and it was a worthy one. Hence the resurrection. Stores that only a few years ago had meager selections of rosés now have entire sections and their cold boxes stocked with a wide range of rosés from around the world. Now, a few common misconceptions about rosés. Number one, all rosé wines are sweet insipid beverages. Nope, fake news. There is a wide array of splendid wines that run from delicate floral and dry to more complex fruited not so dry styles that are really, really good with all kinds of food or just for some totally enjoyable sipping. Number two, rosé wines must be drunk within a year of their vintage dates. Not at all. Lighter styles like those from Provence in France, where rosé is the preferred wine to drink, are indeed best enjoyed young when their crisp acidity and flavors make them perfect partners to hot summer days and fresh seafood. Yet there are quite a few richer and darker colored rosés that actually benefit from a year or two in bottle. They gain greater depth of flavor and become more interesting. Number three, rosé should only be enjoyed in the spring and summer months and served ice cold. Both are so wrong. The more complex rosés have a place at the table throughout the year. Served with the appropriate course at dinner, they can truly add to the enjoyment of any meal and every holiday. And no rosés should be served ice cold. A heavy chill will mute the fruit and floral aromas and deaden the wine's presence in the mouth. As a rule, I put my rosés in the fridge for about 20 minutes or in a bucket of ice and water for about 10 before I serve them. You might prefer them a bit colder, so experiment and find your sweet spot. Number four, rosés are always inexpensive. Another emphatic no, not at all. In every category, there are cheap wines and not so cheap wines. Rosés are actually more difficult to make than most white wines. So you can expect that the better brands are going to be more expensive. If you stay in the $14.99 to $19.99 range, you will probably be very happy with your purchase. But be careful of those that are too inexpensive. If you have a favorite wine shop, trust your merchant to help you. As an aside, I would encourage you to select a wine that is from a country or a small region whose cuisine you are planning to enjoy. Please experiment, but remember, that a wine should be looked at as a condiment that most cultures have fashioned for what they cook and eat. The word terroir, which really means the location that the wine grapes were grown in, has everything to do with the local foods also. The actual soil that grows the local grapes also grows the best food to enjoy the local wine with. This is hyper-local at its best. Now, a little about how rosés become rosés. The juice of all grapes is white, with the exception of a small group of varieties that yield red juice. Wine gets its color by allowing the grape skins to remain in contact with the juice during the primary fermentation. 
white wines are separated from the skins before fermentation. Red wines and rosés are not. So darker skinned grapes can achieve deeper coloration and levels of complexity. A winemaker can determine the color, fruitiness, and flavor by selecting a particular grape or combination of varieties and monitoring the fermentation until his ideal style is reached. Blending a couple of different grapes are often also employed to assemble a wine with varied palate flavors. These styles usually age well. While you can make a rosé from any grape variety, there are certain ones that are generally vinified for its style sought. Lighter rosés are often made from Grenache, from France and Spain, Pinot Noir, uh, which is ubiquitous around the world, Tempranillo from Spain, Sangiovese from Italy. They are wonderful for sipping, but work well with cold dishes, poached or sautéed fish, and even sashimi. Medium body rosés are often the result of Gamay from France, Corvina from Italy, Nebbiolo, also from Italy, and Blaufrankisch from Austria. Try these wines with grilled whole sea bass or shrimp, pork and ham, and light pasta dishes. The more complex rosés are darker in color as they are the offspring of varieties like Cabernet Sauvignon, Zinfandel from California, Syrah, Merlot, or Nero d'Avola from Sicily. More akin to light red wines, this family of rosés marry best with grilled salmon, tuna and swordfish, dishes that are spicy, and roasted chicken or duck. Rosés are made and enjoyed in every wine producing region of the world. It should come as no surprise that they are very popular wherever seafood is a big part of the local cuisine. Restaurants offer more than a few on their lists and feature them regularly by the glass. Wine consumers have embraced the lovely character and versatility of rosés once again. If you haven't enjoyed rosés, or you want to pair them with some great food, or you just want to throw back to the glory days of the 70s, do it. You won't be disappointed. So I hope this all helps. I'm Bob Cappuccino for Wine and Nine. We'll be dropping new episodes every week, so stay tuned for more. Thanks for listening to Wine and Nine. We hope we used your nine minutes wisely. If so, or if not, please let us know. Give us your feedback, good, bad, whatever. We'd love to hear from you. Look for Wine and Nine across social media. We're at wineandnine.com, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So grab a glass and join, subscribe, download, tweet, whichever you choose. Or you can go to our home base at wineandnine.com. Want to email? We're at info at wineandnine.com. 